Hello and welcome to another episode of Anything Arduino. In this episode I am finally going to do that which I've been talking about a long time. I am finally going to motorize my shelves behind me so I don't need to turn cranks and stuff like that. Um, and I'm going to do that with the information from the last episode where I showed you how to use uh, cordless drills and how to control these with the Arduino. So today uh, we have two cordless drill motors, one in each end controlling the outer shelves and technically doing a tennis with the middle shelf. Uh, and with some end stops, one on each end and two in the middle. And the reason the cable is like this is that so you can see what is going on. So before we go into the code and I'll show you how I built this program and this mechanism, I want to say thank you to my patrons who make it possible for me to make these videos a little bit easier, uh, which I all do in my spare time. So with that, let's go into the code and look how I built this. Let's start with some background of this project. So if you haven't already seen the episode where I build these shelves and do the mechanism for uh, crank turning them, then I can recommend that, especially if you are in need of a lot of storage space, because this is a real space saver. Uh, it really makes a big difference uh, on how much uh, floor real estate your shelves take up because all the lanes in between the shelves are removed and just taken out when you need them. So in my case I built three shelves that was possible to move and also there's a shelf stuck to the wall on each side actually there's a wall here but so these three move independent of each other. And I, I've thought of many, many ways to do this, to put one motor here and do a kind of CNC version of this with three, instead of three axes, I had three motors and I tried to do this with stepper motors and that did not work, mostly because the the stepper motors were way not powerful enough and enough and I didn't have a gearbox that could have worked I guess uh, and then I thought of these I, I had the I was sitting trying to figure out how to move them uh, and and I just used my cordless drill to move one of the shelves and thought this is a perfect motor and then I found a few old of these uh, drills lying around, dissected them, and then I did the Anything Arduino episode 33, the last episode, uh, where I go through how to use these motors with the Arduino. So, now we are here, we have one motor here with a threaded rod going out here, and another one here. And then we have one end stop here, one end stop here, and then I have one cable going out to the middle uh, shelf with two end stops there. And these are called one, two, three, four. So the different places this, that this one can be in are then like this. Let's draw the wall and we have all the shelves on this side 
two of them on this side and one on this side. One on this side and two on that side. And all of them on this side. So these are all the the four commands that I, I, I'm going to give the the shelves. Either they should align themselves like this, like that, like that, or like that. And that can be done by this motor first going that way, and then this motor going that way second until the end all these three end stops are pressed putting it like this first this one this motor goes that way until that end stop and then this motor goes that way until that and that end stop and then this motor again goes that way until that end stop is done and that way we have that, this configuration and this one is just this one in reverse and here we have by first moving this shelf there both shelves over there and the other one back we get this one and finally the third uh, the fourth and last one The same as the first one but in reverse. So this is the uh, end result I want from the code uh, and now we can look at the code how I did this. We begin by defining all the variables. So we have four pins for the commands and I've done the commands so I can in a later at the later time I can change the commands from being push buttons to anything else either Wi-Fi 433 or any kind of input to get the uh, commands um, and as you can see no, you can see that the sketch only uses 4584 bytes so there's loads of room left for other things uh, so I I have the four input pins for the commands so it's just four input buttons they are not hardware debounced they're not software debounced because once they are set we go back uh, we go down to here command one is set once that is goes from low to high it is set no matter how many times the command pin 1 is pressed it will just set the command once so that makes us not having to have the the debounce code and then we have the motors we have speed pin so this is this code or these rows here is straight from the fade sketch that uh, and again changed for the motors instead of LEDs and with the direction pin as shown in the last Anything Arduino episode. It's just two of them. Pin 9, pin 10 and pin 11 and pin 12. And then I didn't have enough digital pins so I had to use four of the analog pins for the end stop pins uh, and that is possible to use the analog inputs as digital inputs. And the command pin 1 read through 4 are the is whatever we read from the command pin so once the command pin is read or we, we do a digital read on the command pin and put it into this variable here, here are the command one through four set so these are set once I press the button so this is the status of the end stops so the end stop one through four is the status of the end stops so once the end stop is pressed from we read this pin and this gets the status of that pin we have the motor speed and acceleration acceleration is 5 and that is for the 
ramping up and down of the motors, which we'll get to, and the direction, whichever that is. In the setup, we make them all input pull up. The command command pins and end stop pins are all input pull ups, uh, and the motor speed and direction pins are output. So we begin the loop by reading the command pins and setting that read value to the command pin one through four read. <coughs> And we also check the end stops, so they are whichever value they have. And then comes the if command, so if command pin 1 read from up here is 0, uh, remember they are all pull up, so a 0 means it is pressed. Then command 1 is set and all the other are 0, so you can only have one command at a time. This is very important, so you don't start moving two shelves at the same time. And that is done four times. Command 2 set, Command 3 set, and Command 4 set. And then here comes the command, so here's the first command. If Command 1 is set, then we, do, we set the motor direction to high, which is right in this case. And... Uh, so this you just need to figure this out which is left and right and if it's wrong then you just switch the cables and then we have Y loops so with Y loops we don't do all the commands we stay in this little loop right here until this is fulfilled so while end stop is low uh, it will do this and what it will do, it will, uh, motor speed will be motor speed plus acceleration up until it is 255, when, from which moment it will be 255. Once again from the fade sketch. And then we write this value to the speed pin and the motor speed to that pin. And we are motor two, as you can see. And then we read the end stop to make sure if it's pressed or not. If it isn't, and stop is low, then we continue this until it is low. High, sorry. Until it is high. Once it is high, we ramp down the motor. So that's the opposite. We do acceleration minus acceleration until it is zero. And we analog write that until the motor is fully off and then we once again make sure it is off. And this is the first part of that. If you remember in my sketch, this was the first command of that move. And now we go into the second one. So we move shelf 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right as long as E stop 2 or 3 are not pressed and 2 and 3 are the ones in the middle. So we again we go to the right which was high and then a while loop and this time we need so this sign here is an OR sign so while E stop 2 is low OR E stop 3 is low then we do this. So both of these end stops needs to be pressed for the shelf to come to a halt. And it does the same thing again, the analog right. It checks the end stop 2 and the end stop 3 and it does that until they are both pressed. Then it ramps down motor 1 and motor 1 is to a complete stop. And this finishes command one. So now command one set equals to zero. And I just have some code here to print to make sure that uh, it is done. So, and then this means it goes out of the if statement and starts doing the whole loop again. And because the it takes so long time for the motors, so you, you 
don't really you just push the button once and then it does this and then it's done if you happen to keep the button pressed it will just sense these end stops and just either keep it here or some of the commands will actually move the shelves one more time to make sure that it is in the right spot but then you need to sit and hold that push button for quite a long time command 2 is the same commands again but just in a different order here we have i believe we have three after each other move shelf five six to the right so we have motor two direction high and then we move the motor we ramp it down to a complete halt number two is we move one two three four to the right and then yeah this is number three and number three is we move shelf one two to the left so now we change the motor direction to low and yeah same 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 all over and we do this for all the four commands and when that is done there's nothing more we can strip down this sketch even more by removing all the serial print of course that will make it uh, even less but other than that this is actually it that moves my shelves there are a few of these while loops could probably be made into objects uh, and uh, their own or functions that could be called uh, but uh, so that's an improvement I could make, I guess. So before I managed to take a good picture of how to connect this, I forgot myself and mounted it on this piece of uh, OSB uh, with hot glue and some screws. Um, <laughs> but, again, you need to watch the previous episode for this because the motors are connected, the motors and the relays are connected as said in the previous video to 9, 10 and 11, 12. And, and both the relays of both sides are connected to one pin as described in the previous video. The only difference is, and I even have my own little sheet sheet here, so the extra added in this video are the four command pins here, which are internally pull up and goes away and are they have a common ground. So when pressed it's connected to ground and that makes the command pin being pressed. Also we have four limit switches here on the a0 through A3, uh, as, yeah, as you can see here. So that's, uh, that's the end switches and they are also connected to ground so they are normally closed switches so they're connected to ground until they are pressed and then they are uh, pull up by the internal pull up on these as well. And then just a screw header to add everything together. The MOSFETs connect in here together with power and ground and connected in here and to the motors. All the complex stuff is from the last video and we just have eight more push buttons. That's it basically. So this is something that I have wanted to have done in a long time and it does sound a lot and it is quite slow but it is a really, it's still very good because I can just press the button and start carrying my stuff and once I get there it is open enough so I can put things in. I know you're going to say this is a safety issue.
which it is, I, I'm aware of that, but the end stops are made like they are and once I put them in their correct place uh, and I'm going to add a strip along the whole um, base of the shelves so they really will be if 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 for any reason someone should push a button when someone is in between the shelves once they're slow so you could probably just walk out but even if you don't want to do that you would just put your foot up against the end stop and it would stop so I have had security or safety in mind as well and I really think that this is safe enough and yes I know I have three kids and I really don't want them to be stuck in there uh, so I have thought of that as well I also have my. I also have it all connected to a 433 uh, switch uh, on the wall. So if anything else should happen, then I can just press that one, and it will just all lock down immediately. And I'm going to put one of those buttons on the uh, face of the shelves. So, with that, if you're in need of a lot of storage space, again, I really recommend you build one of these shelves. And if you are lazy and don't want to turn cranks and stuff like that, then do this with it. And if for no other reason, because it's fun and cool and nerdy. Um, so with that said, thank you for watching, I hope you like this and that you are subscribing and I will see you in the next episode. Take care, bye.